Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 30th August 2016. The first article is related to the education and health related topics. The first one is about classroom. Now, in the existing skill development programs, the government is stressing on traditional classroom method of skill imparting. Now, a lecture is different and a skill imparting is different. A skill impartation shall test the efficiency or else ability of a student and there have to be adaptive learning based on his abilities. The regular classroom teaching will not differentiate between the valuable student and the student who is deficit in knowledge or else with regard to the skills. So the government has to go for the adaptive learning which is based on the individual abilities of a given student. And coming to medical education, you know that the National Medical Commission bill, it has been drafted by the Niti Ayog. It says that a profit-based medical colleges need to be allowed. So the number of doctors available will increase and also the profit motive will drive for the better quality. So in this scenario, as of now, there is a severe staff shortage or faculty shortage in the medical education. So it is going to worsen the situation as the new medical colleges are going to poach the existing professors in the government colleges. And second is, there is a primary care and the tertiary care. And most of the preventive care happens at the primary level. But however, for the new doctors, they see tertiary care and specialized care as the remunerative. And if the education, medical education, if the investment happens in that, the student will be more interested in spending on the tertiary, on specialization or else uh, uh, pursuing the specialization to earn more rather than being interested in the primary care. So for a developing country such as India, the primary care is more important, but it may get neglected. So the government shall take certain steps to improvise the primary care and to make it attractive for the medical doctors. And the third thing is, the National Medical Commission, which is going to be established, it will have 20 nominated members. So it means it's going to be thoroughly bureaucratized. So when uh, it is bureaucratized, bureaucracy do not have the nerve to speak to the power. So in these circumstances, nominated plus elected members, these can serve the balance. Now coming to Nirupama Rao articles with regard to recent Prime Minister uh, words on Gilgit Baltistan, Baluchistan Park occupied Kashmir. Now if you observe POK, Gilgit Baltistan, so these are parts of India as for Indian sovereignty claims are concerned. It means the citizens of these countries are also the citizens of India. So any rights violations on these people, it is the responsibility of India to raise them. And coming to Bal I mean Balochistan, the Pakistan has forcibly occupied them. And India being a responsible power, it has a right to raise the human rights violations anywhere in the world. Normally, India has been regarded as a passive power, it means, which is not aggressive with regard to its stand on the opponents. But however, it shows a watershed between India and Pakistan relations and it is also a concern to China. So what the concern to China? The China-Pakistan economic corridor, it ends at the Balochistan, that is, um, with regard to this Gwadar port. And there is Xinjiang unrest which is going on with regard to Uyghur Muslims. So China wants to develop China, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan quadrant to fight this particular disturbance in the Xinjiang province. It don't want other the disturbances in the other provinces, that is Afghanistan, Tajikistan, to get overlapped with Xinjiang. So India raising the human rights issue in Balochistan, it may focus China's One Belt, One Road initiative and the rights violations in the process of taking this economic project forward. And if you see the Gilgit Baltistan, the China has developed the Karakoram Highway. And in the POK also the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, under this certain uh, developmental activities are undertaken. So India has raised objections to this. So in this context, um, India's or uh, Indian Prime Minister's um, words on Balochistan is a very calculated move. Now, but India need to take some caution. Here, if carefully observed, the China-Pakistan, already they have aligned with each other. But this alignment... Uh, 
is like China mostly using Pakistan to project uh, as uh, uh, opposite to the ideas of India. So China being directly vocal, it is making the Pakistan as an, uh, a route to uh, oppose India or else to counter India. So in this scenario, their strength, their relationship may further get strengthened. So that is one thing India has to look at. Because no country efforts an enemy on both the fronts. So that is on the eastern and western front. And we are going to have China to face with. So these are the things which we need to take care of. Now coming to scramjet. It is a supersonic combustion ramjet. So now. When it is the supersonic jet, it is going at a 6 max speed. So at that point of time, igniting its fuel, it's a great task. So the scramjet, it is able to ignite that for 6 seconds, which is an achievement for its drone. And because at the same speed, without reducing the speed, it is able to maintain the thrust of the engine. So that is the reason why it can carry or else it can uh, uh, provide for greater speeds and more major thrust. And the second thing is um, the scramjet uh, engine or else it takes the oxygen from air so that oxidizer need not be carried. So oxygen from the air will burn the hydrogen fuel. So the space required for the hydrogen fuel is very less. And the remaining space can be added up with the payload. So the efficiency is very high for the scramjet. So India has able to demonstrate this to the world. But still some technical improvements are necessary. But it's definitely an achievement for ISRO. Coming to the federal rate hike. You know that world is going through a sustained low interest phase. That is the reason being a recession. From 2008, entire world is in a sustained low interest rate pattern. So in this, um, now slowly in American economy, we can see some improvements. The unemployment rate has decreased. Um, and also the consumption and consumption related expenditure has increased. Obviously, it can gain up or give a push to the inflation. So in this scenario, uh, now persistent low interest rates um, they can further increase the consumption patterns. Now the correction is necessary. So in the, I mean obviously, the Fed is going to move towards a new normalization process. So Indian RBA also has to take this into consideration with regard to its policy. Now coming to politics of the dress code. Now sexism and misogyny, these are very related to each other. So, the women dress code, either it is in the East or West, that is in accordance with the social conditioning across patriarchal norms. So, what is this social conditioning? If you carefully observe, in the East, the woman dress and how she behaves is seen as a pride of the family or it is as part of the culture which the family has to live in. Now, in the West, yes, choice of the dress is allowed for the woman. But however, these choices are being objectified. It means that women is being produced for commercial advertisements, etc. And she is being shown as an object for sex. So in these circumstances, the woman is being exploited uh, or there is misogyny both in the Eastern and Western cultures. And the dress codes are a symbol for this. And coming to India, Myanmar, so Aung San Suu Kyi, she has made her first visit to China. And the president of Myanmar, you, I mean, has made them first visit to India. So in this case, around 69 bridges are agreed to build between India and this thing, which can connect India to the Southeast Asia. So this is the first visit of Mr. Yu Hitin Kya, the president of Myanmar. So, the India has given all its support for the new democratic establishment in Myanmar. Coming to Syria, we have talked many a times the Kurds in Syria. If you take these Kurds, they are, being, they are the most victims of this UK's withdrawal from these areas. Now, Kurds are spread across Iraq, Iran, majorly in Turkey, followed by Syria. So, in this, the Syrian Kurds are very active against ISIS. And for this, they are getting support from uh, support from United States. And the Turkey regards the Kurds as our Kurdistan party as an opponent. And people protection groups of Turkey, they are being seen as uh, terrorists. 
So in this, U.S. is in a unique situation. It is helping the Syrian Kurds. Um, at the same time, in along with the Turkey lines, um, it sees these, uh, I mean, Turkish Kurds as the terrorists. Uh, and coming to Iraq um, and Iran. In Iraq, um, the Kurds are the victims of the state persecution. And in the Iran, so the Turkey supports the Iran Kurds. Uh, so in this way, the Turkey sees the Kurds in its own territory as the enemies, or as enemies of the state. And on the other side, it supports the same Kurds. And U.S. supports the Syrian Kurds and is in line with the Turkey with regard to the Kurds in Turkey. So this is about Kurds. Now, U.S. and India has brought in various institutional mechanisms to engage, especially in the trade and commerce. The first one is strategic and commercial dialogue. The strategic dialogue was started during the Clinton era as the state of Secretary of the State. So along with that, uh, later commercial dialogue has been added. Um, so added to that, um, US India Innovation Forum is working and Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Um, so these are the three things at the commercial level both the countries are uh, engaging with. Um, so Mr. Secretary of the State Kerry has visited India and Indian Finance Minister Jaitley has asked for the investment in infrastructure that is National Invest Infrastructure Investment Fund. So he requested for the insurance companies pension funds to invest in NIIF. Now coming to change in parliamentary calendar. You all know what is an vote on account budget. An vote on account budget is a budget which is less than a year. So normally it is produced for two months um, because by the time the budgetary proceedings are completed, uh, so already we are into a new financial year. So to make the government function, so two months or one-sixth of the total budget amount is automatically allocated. So normally we use the term vote on account budget for that. But however it can be more than two months. During the election year sometimes it will be, I mean it will be passed for more than two months. So, Article 116 of the Constitution provides for this vote on account budget. Now, the budget normally is presented in the last day of the month of the February. Now, it is being moved to January 1st. So that by the time new financial year starts, the budget will be passed to the government. And the second thing is, now, uh, Eckworth Committee recommendations led to the separation of railway and uh, general budget. Now again, the general budget is going to be clubbed with, or the railway budget is going to be clubbed with the general budget. And the third thing, the financial year, there is a discussion, the financial year may be changed if necessary. But however, to what extent it is sure is not clear. So these are the various changes that are expected to come up. So these are the articles for today. Thank you very much.